Jesus wants to speak, so I'm going to speak with Jesus. Come divine will, come speak in my speaking. Listen in my listening. Breathe in my breathing. Think in my thinking. Welcome to 2024, folks. It's my first video of the new year. And a reminder that we are in a year of prayer given to us by Pope Francis. This is from volume 12, July the 11th, 1919. I'm taking the quote from the doctoral thesis written by Father Joseph Inutzi. Um, so this is his translation. As blessed Jesus extended the heavens over our heads, likewise he extended a heaven within our soul, or souls, or rather not one, but many heavens. Indeed, heaven is our intelligence, heaven is our gaze, heaven is our word, action, desire, affection, and heartbeat. But there is this difference. The external heavens do not change nor do the stars increase or decrease, whereas the heavens of our interior are subject to changes. Therefore, if the heaven of our mind thinks in a saintly way, as thoughts are formed, stars, suns, and beautiful comets are formed as well. And as our angel sees them formed, he takes them and places them in the heaven of our intelligence. And if the heaven of our mind is holy, if our gaze is holy, if our words, desires and heartbeats are holy, he does likewise. Therefore our gazes are stars, our words are light, our desires are comets that extend, our heartbeats are the sun and each one of our senses adorns its own heaven. <clears throat> so, the heavens of our interior are subject to changes. And if we think saintly, look saintly, desire saintly, if these things are holy, then we are creating within, within us, within the interior. Can't feel it can't see it but Jesus tells us what we're doing consequently if we think evil if we're gazing at evil things if you're desiring evil things then we are doing the opposite we're not creating we're destroying <clears throat> what are we destroying first and foremost our own interior we are taking a sledgehammer to our soul, to the faculties of the soul, and we're destroying the good, the kingdom that God is building within us. Now I'm saying this particularly at this time of the year, because I have read so much evil about our Holy Father, from bishops and laity, priests, the works, and I don't understand why people don't just read what he writes. In fact, he didn't even write it, did he? Just read the document that he signed off. Look carefully at what is being presented to you. Because what he wrote was actually quite beautiful. It was a f phenomenal for evangelization. And then slandering the Holy Father, slandering anybody, slandering anybody. Have a, have a read of Ephesians chapter 4. And Paul will tell, St. Paul will tell you what you shouldn't and should be doing. Now, for children of the divine will, when you bless rather than curse, when you think holy rather than evil, when you think good rather than bad, you are forming stars suns and beautiful comets and your angel will see them formed 
and place them in the heaven of your intelligence. So your angel is there, waiting for the good thought, waiting for the good desire, waiting for the holy intentions and desires. And there is nothing holy in slander of our Holy Father. There is nothing holy in it. Nothing. Okay, nothing. We do not slander. I mean, when I was growing up, my father would tell me, you do not speak evil of a priest. At the time, the place where I was living, the priest, one of the priests there was actually committing child abuse. One of them. But my father said, do not speak evil of priests. I'm talking about the, the Pope. Do not speak evil of the Pope. Do not judge. You don't know what's going on in his interior. You don't know what God is doing with him. But don't judge people, period. Stop slandering. Just stop it. Because that, that word is formed in your soul. Your angel is witnessing it. And he's probably stood there saying, well, there's nothing I can do with that. <laughs> Down the garbage container for that one. Off to the recycling depot for that thought. In fact, you can't even take it to recycling. Just burn it on the wood burner. That's all it's good for. Can't form a thing with that particular thought, intention or desire or act. Can't do anything. If you want to take possession of the divine will, folks, every thought, every word, every gaze must be holy. And if that's raising the bar a little bit too much for you, all we're doing is introducing you to the supernatural life of grace. The purgation that is absolutely fundamental for you to grow in the divine will. And it begins with a bit of self-control over the way you speak about others. A bit of self-control over how you might think about others. A bit of self-control over your desires. Because ultimately, if you want to take possession of the divine will, it has to become the only desire of your heart. Lord, I ask you, with your will, that you would help everyone watching this and any other videos I pull out. And as they read your, the Divine Will Diaries, as they do the Hours of the Passion, as they watch the other videos, the other teachers on the Divine Will, I pray, Lord Jesus, Blessed Mother Mary, Louisa, St. Joseph, Angels of God, bring them the graces that they need so that this year, their growth in the divine will can greatly move forward. And all this, any rubbish of the past, is going to become the rubbish of the past. Fiat voluntas tua.